As new laws become effective and old laws phase out, investors should be mindful about how these changes may potentially impact their respective tax situations. It certainly can be a lot to think about. Today, we'll provide some top ideas for you to keep top of mind, right now on UBS Trending. Hi, everybody, and welcome to UBS Trending. I'm Anthony Pastore. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm excited to welcome my two guests to the show, wealth strategist Jennifer Land and Premini Scandora. Thank you both for joining. Um, we've got this beautiful uh, uh, report that you both worked on called the Top 10 Planning Topics for 2024. We don't have time to get to all 10 today, so we're going to pick four of those that you both have said are the ones that you really want to highlight. So, Jennifer, maybe I'll start with you. Why don't you kick us off with the first one that's on your list? The two biggest items that we are going to focus on today, and they are number one and two on our list, are the Corporate Transparency Act and the sunset of the estate and gift exemption amount. The Corporate Transparency Act created new reporting requirements that will affect many family businesses and other entities that families use in their wealth structures. Under the act, reporting companies must provide information about their beneficial owners to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. The Advanced Planning Group actually has a great UBS trending video on this topic, and Berkey actually discussed the requirements of the act and what this means for business owners. Um, I will say additionally, though, after the video came out, there were some new developments around this topic and its constitutionality, and you can find out more on that on the alert that we provided and put out um, a few weeks ago. So in light of an already existing video, today we're gonna focus more on the sunset provisions Premini is going to discuss and focus on the estate planning aspects. We are really encouraging um, our advisors and our clients to start planning now. And later, I'm going to focus more on the income tax changes. Great. Thank you, Jen. Appreciate you kicking us off there. So, Premini, when, when it comes to estate planning, as Jen said, you were kind of focused on that. What does everyone need to know about the sunset of the estate and gift exemption? Obviously, time is everything. Timing, of course, is everything as well. What should we know? In the U.S., you know, each individual has a lifetime exemption that they can use to transfer assets either during lifetime or at death without incurring any federal estate or gift taxes. The 2017 Tax Act effectively doubled the lifetime exemption amount from $5 million to $10 million adjusted annually for inflation. Because of these changes, the 2024 lifetime exemption amount is about is 13.61 million per person in 2024, and the combined exemption amount is 27.22 million in 2024 for married couples. However, the thing to note is this window of opportunity presented by the elevated exemption amount is limited. At the end of 2025, this tax provision is set to expire, cutting the lifetime exemption roughly in half unless Congress takes action to extend it. What this means is that individual taxpayers with significant estates that are above the exemption amount should consider making gifts that use the enhanced lifetime exemption before the end of 2025 to the extent it's feasible for them to do so. By making gifts that use the larger lifetime exemption, the individual not only removes those assets from their estates, but also removes any future appreciation with respect to the money or the property that they give away. A taxpayer who dies with a taxable estate greater than the exemption amount can be subject to a federal estate tax rate of up to 40%. Additionally, Anthony, it's also important to keep in mind that some states impose an estate tax of their own, and the exemption amounts aren't typically as generous as the federal estate tax exemption. We can't emphasize enough how important it is to start planning now to be well prepared for when the exemption does decrease. For individuals and families willing and able to take advantage of these higher amounts to be able to make significant gifts, 2024 may be the best chance they have to do so. As we've seen in the past, when the exemption is set to decrease, estate planning attorneys are often inundated with clients looking to do the same type of planning. And there are often other considerations to keep in mind as well, such as appraisals, valuations, or transfer requirements that can take time. You know, one of the things, and I, I'm going to echo what you just said, um, uh, estate tax attorneys are going to be inundated when this, if this sunsets, if Congress doesn't act. So you don't want to be caught in a waiting line of, you know, 100 people before you. Like, get on this now if you, if you can, because certainly timing is everything. So, Jen, uh, you know, what else do we need to know about the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act sunsetting provisions? So, you know, obviously we're estate planning lawyers, so we focus on that 
for the most part. However, it's not only the estate and gift tax exemptions that are going to sunset at the end of 2025. There are also several income tax provisions that are scheduled to sunset. Now, although Congress you know, potentially could extend some or all of them, it's just important to kind of know which provisions are expiring so that taxpayers can be prepared to maximize their tax savings in case the provisions do sunset as currently scheduled. Two big items um, amongst others, but two big items that we discussed are the individual income tax rates and the standard deduction. So the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act lowered income tax rate. And for example, the top tax rate was decreased to 37% from 39.6%. And again, assuming Congress doesn't act, Starting on January 1 of 2026, that top tax rate will revert back to the 39.6% number. Additionally, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act also nearly doubled the standard deduction for filing statuses. So back in 2017, prior to the enactment of the act, for an individual um, single taxpayer, the standard deduction was $6,350, and it was $12,700 for a married couple filing jointly. After the enactment of the act in 2018, the standard deduction went up to $12,000 for a single individual and $24,000 for a married couple filing jointly. So, you know, as a result of that increase, there weren't necessarily as many taxpayers that were itemizing their deductions. And just for context, this year in 2024, the standard deduction for a single taxpayer is $14,600. And for a married couple filing jointly, it's $29,200. We'll get one more year of inflation, but again, starting on that January 1 of 2026, that standard deduction amount will essentially be cut in half. You'll still get an inflation adjustment amount, but it will be um, a decent amount less. So with all these changes, we just think it's really important you know, that individuals and taxpayers and clients really just plan accordingly. Yeah, that's probably the best rule of thumb, Jen. Thanks for saying that. And so as we're kind of looking at everything we're talking about today, plus there's a lot more information in the, uh, in the, the, the report that you both worked on here, with all these new rules, how can investors, how can our clients, how can we better plan for our futures? Prem, do you want to give us... Your thoughts on that? You know, one thing that we would like to stress on also is not to forget about annual exclusion gifts. Um, as a reminder, in 2024, the annual exclusion allows an individual to give up to 18,000 to any number of individuals or 13, uh, 36,000, sorry, for married couples who elect to split gifts. So this is important for family members, grandparents to keep in mind you know, for gifts to family and loved ones. And just as a final note, any gifts in excess of this amount in 2024 will count against an individual's 13.61 million lifetime exemption. So we can't, again, stress how, you know, the, how powerful it is to make annual gifts when you compound that with, uh, combine that with compounding investment growth over time can be pretty significant. Yeah, Prem, thank you. And Jen, any last final thoughts for our viewers today? No, I, th I think the main thing that we've stressed, you know, a few times is just start planning and start planning now. You know, the attorneys, CPAs, valuation experts, they're going to be bogged down with with work and, and trying to plan for their clients. So the sooner you can take advantage, the better. Excellent. That's that's great advice. Thanks for ending us on that note. I want to thank both of you, Jennifer and Prima, for joining us today. And uh, great to see you both. Great job. By the way, the top 10 planning it says top 10 planning topics for 2024. You can call or contact your financial advisor to get a copy of that. Um, more information in there besides what we talked about today. So thanks again to Jennifer and to Primini. And for more information on everything coming out of UBS, visit our website at ubs.com forward slash views. Plus, you can follow us on social media. We're on all the platforms, including Instagram. You can follow us at UBS Trending for lots of UBS Studios content. Plus, if you have any questions about your own portfolio or anything we've talked about today, make sure you're talking with your financial advisor. Until next time, I'm Anthony Pastore. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. And remember to keep your eyes on what's trending. We'll see you soon.